Credit cards are great. They're handy, they're convenient, and they sure do beat carrying around cash. But credit cards can also have a downside. Today, I wanna to go over the seven things you can do to make sure you're using your cards wisely and to make sure you're getting the most out of them that you can. This is Monday Mornings with Mark. Hi, I'm your host, Mark J. Schmidt of Remax Country and MoveMeMark.com, where I help you get the most out of the real estate market and your home. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube and make sure you like us on Facebook so you don't miss out. When I was a freshman in college at Seton Hall University, hazard set forward, I remember going to the cafeteria one day and outside the cafeteria, there was a guy with a few tables set up and one of the tables had these applications on it and the other table had a whole bunch of t-shirts. And he stopped me and he said, hey, uh, if you'd like a free t-shirt, get a free t-shirt if you apply for a visa card. So I was like, what, I can get a free t-shirt? Why not? I mean, I looked at the t-shirts, I chose a fantastic Rocky Horror Picture Show t-shirt and I filled out the application, and uh, then, I uh, must have been a few weeks later, I got a credit card in the mail. Uh, I got my very own Visa card. Now, what's interesting is that I remember this card came with like a, a $300 credit limit, which for uh, a kid who's 18, hey, good enough, man, I'll take it. What I realized later on was that I was potentially getting myself into hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in potential credit card debt all for the price of a free t-shirt. Not a very good uh, trade-off, if you will. Now, what made me think about making this video today was a recent credit card statement I received. I got my credit card statement in the mail and it said that I owed about $2,280. And what was interesting was that on the credit card statement, it said that if I made the minimum payment from here on out, and the minimum payment was $25, it would take me 11 years to pay off that balance. And by the time I was done paying it, I would have paid over $4,000. That is a lot of money, and it's a long time to be paying off $2,800. Today, I wanna to go over seven things that you can do to make sure you're using your credit card correctly and getting the most out of it. So let's get started. My first tip is, unless it's an emergency, don't spend money that you don't have. Many times people will uh, see something they want and it might be an impulse buy and they'll say, hey, you know what, no problem. I'll be getting money or I'll have money eventually and then I can pay. Don't get into that habit. You should really use your credit card like it's an extension of your cash so that you can make sure you're not overspending and not getting into a ton of debt that you're not going to be able to pay back. This actually leads to my second piece of advice for you, which is don't use your credit card as a means of paying things off over time. So let me explain this a bit. A lot of times we might see things that we want and we'll say, oh gee, you know what? I want a new gaming system. I want a new TV, whatever. And you say, okay, you know what? I'll put it on my credit card and then I can pay it off over a few months. Now the challenge is this. I looked up interest rates on various credit cards. Interest rates on credit cards start at about 12.99%. Some of them go as high as 25.49%. That is a lot of interest to be paying just to buy a TV or a gaming system right here, right now. So instead of putting that purchase on that credit card and paying it off over time, what you should do is pay yourself for a few months put that money aside and then either go pay cash for that gaming system or that TV, whatever you're looking to buy, or buy it and then just pay the credit card off with that money you saved once you get your credit card bill. This can save you a ton of money in interest, especially if you're thinking about just making the minimum payments, don't do it. Put off the, you know, we're, we're all about immediate gratification here. Don't get involved in that. Get the self-discipline, don't buy it now, put the money aside, buy it later. You're gonna save yourself a ton of money and a ton of stress and worry over these credit card bills down the line. So my third piece of advice for you is don't max out your card. 
Now, obviously, you know that every credit card has a credit limit. Like I told you before, when I was in college, I got a credit limit of like $300. Right now, I'm a little bit older, so I've got a lot more. But when you use up your credit card and max it out, it can have bad effects on your credit score. Uh, there's a thing called credit utilization. Credit utilization is how much of your credit card limit you've actually spent versus what you're allowed to spend. The more you max out your card, the higher that uh, debt goes compared to your limit, the more it can push your score down. If you're looking to buy a home uh, or buy anything for that matter that is gonna require some sort of financing, this can lead to you either not getting the financing or it can lead to higher interest rates because you can appear to be a bit more of a risk than a buyer who doesn't have maxed out credit cards. So definitely don't max out your credit cards. Keep an eye on what you're spending. My fourth piece of advice for you is pay your credit card bill off in full every month. Now, why would you do that? Well, Remember, you're paying interest on that money, but for that first payment that, you know, as soon as you get your credit card bill, you're not paying any interest on that. So if you pay your credit card bill in full every month, you're paying zero interest on all those purchases you made. Why spend any more money than you need to, especially when you could be charged upwards of 25% on your purchases for the annual percentage rate? Don't do it. Make sure that you can pay your bill off every month so that you don't get into a habit of, or, or the situation of having to pay extra interest every month. Now, my fifth piece of advice for you is check your statement every month. Most credit cards have what's known as a $0 liability guarantee. This means that if anyone has made a fraudulent purchase on your credit card, you will not be held responsible for it. But you have to let the credit card company know that you had this fraudulent charge. So go through your credit card statement every month, make sure that all the charges are yours. Even if it's not a fraudulent charge, sometimes a, uh, you know, a, a business or, you know, if you go to the doctor or whatever, they may accidentally double charge your card. Make sure you go through your statement every month so mistakes don't fall through the cracks and you can save money. Now, number six is a good one. Use your perks. Every credit card comes with perks and you should take advantage of them. So the most uh, obvious perk that most people know about is cash back. Many credit cards offer uh, cash back rewards. I used to have a Disney credit card which gave me uh, Disney reward dollars. I could go, go use them dollar for dollar at Disney World or, or at uh, Disney stores. But there are other benefits to having credit cards that you should definitely be taking advantage of. Uh, one of the many credit cards offer uh, free car rental insurance. Uh, there are price protections you can have with a credit card. And some credit cards even offer extended warranties for the items that you purchase with those credit cards. Look into your particular credit card, see what they offer, and make sure you're taking advantage of it. This is money you could be saving, and it's money that you could be putting towards your credit card bill instead of spending it on things that you've basically already paid for. My seventh piece of advice for you is use the mobile app. You know, we all have these phones and most credit card companies have fantastic mobile apps that you can use that will help you do things like check your account balance, see how much uh, available credit you have, and also if your card is ever lost or stolen, uh, you can actually go on these apps and report it right there. Now, like I said before, you won't be held responsible for any charges that occur that are not your charges. But it's a good idea and it's the right thing to let the credit card company know that your card was lost or stolen so they can shut it off right away and get you a new card and then you don't have to worry about a thing. So if you take these steps, you should have a fantastic time using your credit card and keep yourself out of danger. I wanna remind you of something. One day you might be looking to buy a home and your credit score is gonna be derived in a good part by how you've used your credit card. And if they see you've got high balances, if they see that you've been keeping a balance for months on end, if they see you've got late payments, it's gonna cause your credit score to go down. And you know what happens when your credit score goes down? That means the interest rate that you're gonna wind up paying on that home you're gonna be buying, that's gonna go straight up. You don't want that. Remember two things. When your interest rate on your mortgage goes up, 
It means one, you pay more money over the life of the loan, and two, you don't qualify for as much of a loan because instead of putting all that money you have towards principal, you now have to pay it towards interest. So don't get involved in that. Use your credit card wisely and it will pay off dividends for years to come. Now listen, if you have questions about credit cards or about buying or selling a home, there's a fantastic resource. It's my website. You can find me at www.movememark.com. Thanks so much for watching. If you missed our last episode, I've got it right here for you. And here's another episode that YouTube thinks you should watch. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that circle and subscribe so you don't miss out. And I'll see you next week for more Monday Mornings with Mark. You have a great week.